Welcome viewers. Today we are doing a session, a very important session actually, with Hankel School of Business. Uh, with me, I have Natalia from the international office. And today we are going to understand what it takes to get admission in Hankel School of Business. A lot of students are asking these days that I want to go for a top rank university. I want to go for a top rank business school. I think this session is going to be very valuable for those students who are looking at a top rank management school in European Union. And uh, as you know, uh, Hankin is basically placed in Finland. And uh, today we will discuss why students from India should choose Hankin as the site destination for the higher education opportunity. Nadaria, welcome to the session. Uh, yes, hi, Dipendra. Thank you very much. And uh, hi hello to also to all viewers. Uh, so let me start sharing my screen so I can go through maybe some points about Hunter School of Economics. And then also, if Dipendra, if I miss something, then do please also ask me a question so I can uh, yeah jump, like fill that gap Absolutely. in if I'm missing something from the presentation. So, Absolutely. okay, I hope that you are now seeing my mm, screen. Yeah, so basically this session, students, is going to be about two areas. It has been divided into two parts. In the part one, we will discuss why you should choose Hankin as your study destination. Uh, we I have made a lot of videos about studying in Finland, and I'm sure I'm going to put those description in the description also. Uh, you can see the other videos. But uh, in the first part, we'll see this. And the second part, will move toward the admission requirement for the programs available for 2022 intake. Please, Natalia. Yes. Okay. So let me. Yep. Let me talk a bit more about master's uh, program at Hunting School of Economics and why it might be it might be your one of maybe first choices or at least a, a very very good choice for you to consider to continue your studies after the bachelor's degree. Uh, so let, just a few brief words maybe on studying in Finland. Uh, so let me tell you a few words about what Finland is for the students. You probably know something about that already, but just to keep, uh, to refresh your memory and just to mention a few things that usually people do not know about Finland or maybe know, but it's always good to refresh that Finland is the happiest country in the world and it has been ranked as the number one country in the world and happiness for four years already in the row. Uh, and I think that actually the reason behind it is that Finns eat most of the ice cream in Europe. Uh, it's 13 kilos per kilogram. So if it's, for example, now it's winter, but uh, you can easily see a person eating an ice cream on the like bus station. So it's very normal, but I think it's also one of the, of the reasons why people are really happy here. Uh, and also Finland and Helsinki uh, is the capital of uh, Finland. Uh, it's very well known for good work-life balance, uh, both for people who live here all their life and also, also for the people who arrive here to study or to work. And for you, for example, as an international student, it will also mean that you will have an opportunity to study full-time, to have your student life full-time and also during your studies, you will have a possibility also to create a network that will help you. And Hankin, of course, will help you to build up the network to land your first job once you have graduated. And of course, and also one of the reasons why people are happy here, I think that it's a lot, a lot of innovations and creativity going on everywhere in all the areas, uh, especially, for example, in the gaming area. And Finland is actually a home of the Angry Birds. I'm sure that everybody in the world heard about Angry Birds. It's now also a movie, I think, not only an app game, but uh, there are many, a lot of great things in Finland and uh, uh, all the international students actually may benefit from all the good things that are available here in Finland for everybody. So, uh, yes, so what's Finland for the international students? is that it's a very clear and transparent visa application process. So once you have been admitted to study, uh, you will just go to the embassy or, or to the closest consulate and to uh, and apply for their residence permit. And you usually all them uh, are supposed to arrive to Finland. And actually, uh, we, this uh, has not yet uh, happened, but we are very close to that. In the From the 1st of April, uh, there will be a new law in force here in Finland that the students actually will get a residence permit card for the whole period of their studies. So for example, at Hankin, the master's program is for two years. So now the students will get the residence card for the two for the two whole years they are supposed to study. 
Uh, so this is also something that we are really happy about because it will for our students reduce the stress about the applications uh, and about uh, like you know just remembering that you need to apply for to renew renew your card so from uh, if everything goes smoothly and we believe that it will uh, from all the students who will arrive for the intake 2022 will have the residence permit for studies in full force until the end of the studies in 2024. Uh, also, in Finland, there is a great opportunities for housing and available healthcare for students. Hanken, for example, is uh, offering the students two, op two housing options. We do have our own housing building for international students and also one that we own together with uh, one of the Universities of Applied Sciences here in, in Helsinki. Uh, so, and of course, international students coming from the outside of, your, uh, outside of Finland, they are uh, also are prioritized in the queue. Uh, so it's uh, there are options, for example, to have a room in a shared apartment on for somebody who would like to have more privacy. There is also an opportunity to apply for a uh, room uh, for the like a studio apartment for one. Uh, and also uh, after graduation, students receive a year of valid residence permit for job search um, and uh, uh, this is actually something that uh, many of our students use, but uh, also to keep in mind that uh, Hankin students are very, uh, very welcome to labor market here in Helsinki, and most of them uh, land job already before the graduation. Uh, like ninety six percent of our uh, alumni uh, or students actually, they do get a job offer before they have graduated. Uh, and the rest will get a job offer within the six months after graduation. So this is also something that we, that we are really, really proud of. Uh, Natalia, I have a small mm -hmm. question. Um, yeah, of course. There were a lot of questions which students have given me in, in the in, in the advance, you know, I collected them. Would you mm -hmm. like me to um, do the questions with you now or should we just wait for the session to over? Uh, we can do maybe like talking now. So I, it's not like I'm going through the whole presentation. Okay. So if you have any questions now, then please ask them now and I will try to answer them. Super. So basically, uh, you just mentioned that Finland is going to introduce from April that uh, students will get the uh, president permit for the entire duration, which was done as a pilot project, I believe, in the last year. They did some kind of a project in a way you can show, uh, because I believe there was a, uh, some students actually got it also, but it was just on a pilot run. Now, when you say that they're going to have the entire duration, so if I'm coming for two years for a program with you, I need to show two years of living expenses and I have to pay my first year of tuition fee because this is what I believe the Finland immigration is, uh, you know, f uh, following the uh, the all the resident permit in the in the last year that you have to pay the first year and you have to show the living expense for the first year in case you're, pay you're paying a half year tuition fee. You have to show one year of your living expenses and a half year as well. And the entry of your, uh, your, your living expenses has to be shown in a very legitimate way. Because I think uh, uh, in my experience, uh, the Finland is uh, after, uh, after Ireland, Finland is coming as the second country where every single uh, you know, entry of your money is being tracked. Because I've seen a lot of students have got the uh, communication from the immigration office that you have to prove where is the money coming from, you know. So uh, do you, uh, in two years time, if you're saying it's going to be two year resident permit, do you think it will be two years of living expenses also? Uh, well, that's a very good question. And unfortunately, I don't have like really exact answer about that because we have not yet received the regulations from the migration services. But I believe that what the requirement will be that you will need to show this living expenses money for two years but when it comes to the tuition fee then i think you might be allowed to pay them in the uh in the tax that university allows you to do so uh so for example at hankin the tuition fee may be paid in uh, i think in two installments if i remember now correctly the first one should be paid before uh orientation days or before the academic year starts and the second one uh, needs to be paid basically closer to New Year's or some or around right. that time, so you can continue to the uh, like or spring semester at Hanken. Uh, I believe that the demand from the immigration services will be that you will need to prove your uh, possibility to for them like for the living expenses for the for the two years of the residence permit, and you will be allowed to 
pay the tuition fee in the universities, like a tax that university allows you. So as Hankin, for example, allows to the student. I think they're going to give the more or less like an option. If you want two years, you show me two years. If you if you want a year, you have to show for a year. Because I think this is what, um, you know, because some people might go for one year residence permit, some might go for two years residence permit. And uh, but yeah, but you're right, it's too early to say anything. But let's say uh, anybody who can show, because uh, I have been telling people, you have to be very clear for your uh, bank statement from your parents or your you know grandparents or brother sisters alone. Because um, I've seen the visa refusals from Finland immigration, not from not of my students, but of many of my uh, other students who have come to me from other agencies. And I've mm -hmm. seen the biggest challenge was that nobody knew that that you have to have a legitimate source of income. You cannot just put any entry of the money in the account and just put the bank statement because every time I did also, you know, we, we also made mistakes. But thankfully, our students, I think by somehow, all of my students have got the proof that where the money came from. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. some of them, got, uh, and, 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 and we had such an incredible experiences. I want to share one with you as well. So normally in India, we do not, uh, students hide their refusals, you know, from the embassies. You, you get a visa refusal from one country, you hide from the second country. But in okay. Finland, what I like is that one of my students got the money back from Canada as a refund. And we said it in the paperwork that he got the refund from, you know, he got the visa refusal and got the money from Canada and he got the visa. So basically, mm -hmm. I think the message is that be as clear as possible and as honest as possible. I think uh, countries like Finland, which come from Scandinavian sector, you encourage everything is given in advance, you know, like in open. Uh, yeah, I can agree to that. And I also like in Finland, everything is very, very transparent. So I can understand where, where this demand comes from for the, you know, to uh, show where your funds are coming from. So, uh, yeah, you need to be very transparent about that as well. And like from the student's perspective, so you need to be very sure where your money comes from and be able also to show it to the embassies and to the consulates once you apply to the visa. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, I, ha I cannot now say more about the immigration because we are all also in the whole university center, uh, like uh, uh, and from the university side in Finland, we are waiting from that for that decision in from the immigration services. But we are really hoping that it will be now during March, and in from the beginning of April, uh, we will know also the clear guidelines, so we can also help you to understand how the process will work from April and afterwards. Great. So we can go further with the next. Uh, so basically, uh, I think well, we need to understand now. Um, there are so many business schools in European Union, you know, in France, in Germany, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, you know, we see all. Um, one thing I think students need to know is that what is the difference between you are a triple crown accreditation institute, right? I mean, very few institute in the world have triple crown accreditations. Uh, you know, and they have maintained it also. I've seen many have it, one or two uh, or even three, but uh, very few have maintained it. And I've seen that, what, what exactly does Triple Crown mean? I think it's good if you can explain to the students, um, uh, what does this mean to have Triple Crown? Uh, yes, so as you mentioned, Hunting is a triple accredited business school and very few very few business schools in the world are, uh, have triple accreditation. I think only around 1%. Uh, and what it means for the student, actually, that this, um, the degree that the student gets from the triple accredited university, from, from Hunkin, for example, that the degree will be recognized everywhere in the world. Uh, so if you, for example, decide, and of course, it's uh, the stamp of the quality education, and uh, it, it will um, help a student to excel in the career wherever he or she decides to go up to the university, make his he or she stay in Finland or travel elsewhere for the career or come back to India or do whatever. It's like a ground that you can lean on. Uh, and everywhere in the world, the companies, the employers, uh, and also the universities, for example, if you can decide to continue into the academics and take a PhD program elsewhere, uh, that will be a quality stamp, stamp on your education degree from Hanken. And it will also rank you higher, for example, if you apply for jobs, if you apply for a PhD place or a researcher place, or uh, it will just put your uh, CV on the top of the all other uh, CVs that might come for this similar position, for the same position. 
Uh, so yes, that is something that uh, we are really, really pr proud of. And uh, this is something that also I know that our students are really proud of because uh, many of our students uh, also travel overseas for the career. Also our Finnish students and alumni and also our international alumni and they uh, are very sure in their degree and in the quality of education they have received from Hanken. And uh, this also helps them to um, build the career they want to build. Great. So student, for students who know what is the Triple Crown accreditation is, great. But the ones who doesn't know, um, uh, Equus is one accreditation, ACSB is the second one, and MBA is the third one. The three top yeah. accreditation any business school in the world going to have. And I can, uh, to make it more simple language, parents as well who don't understand it, uh, I would say uh, if you talk about IAM, so in, in India, IAM is considered as one of the top notch, you know, institutes in the world. So I believe uh, we can put easily Hankin and IAM in the same same boat because they both come in the same category. Uh, for students uh, who know accreditation, uh, great. But the students who uh, don't know much about the uh, accreditations. So IAM Calcutta is triple crown from Equis, from ASCSB and also from EMBA. When we see Hankin, it also has similar accreditation. So you can easily put uh, IM Calcutta and Hankin on the same platform, same same rankings because they both are a world ranked institution. So it's easier for you to understand the ranking of Hankin now when I can compare with IM Calcutta. Uh, yep. Uh, so, and also we do have uh, other accreditations. So for example, last year, 2021, Hankin Education was ranked in Financial Times ranking number 55. And actually, well, last year we were the best university in Finland in this in Financial Times. Uh, ranking for the masters in management, and uh, uh, not to mention, not uh, not the last one to mention is Umulti rank. Uh, it's the ranking that me measures the citation of the researchers, and actually, Hankin researchers are very very active all over the world, and uh, Hankin ranks very very high in on citation rate and top cited publications, uh, not only in Finland but also in the international publications as well. So Hankin ranking is 55 for the last year. Wow, that's yes. Okay. So again, students, if you're looking for a top rank institute in European Union, Hankin come as the, one of the very favorite destinations for those students who are looking for a very you know, prestigious institution because there are a lot of business schools uh, in European Union and they're good as well. But if you're looking for the, the one of the best schools, so I would say Hankins come uh, of that ranking very clearly. Next comes is uh, how. Uh, if I'm a student from India, okay, I can see that you have got this triple crown accreditations. I'm sure if I'm comparing with you with IIT Calcutta, a lot of students can understand the quality of education. Now, when it comes to um, as an international student, as you already mentioned that, you know, your, your alumni and your students who pass from your graduate from your school, uh, they have very high chance of getting the, uh, the employment in Finland um, or maybe also in the European Union, not only Finland. How much is, can, can you have some kind of a data where you can give me like how many percentage of students got the job in the first couple of years or maybe, you know, some kind of data like that? Uh, yes, and I think I have already mentioned that. Uh, so 96% of our uh, of the students do get a job offer before they have graduated and the rest will get the job offer within six months after the graduation. Okay, great. Fine. So um, when when we talk about the uh, so now we know the pro uh, about Hankin uh, as students there are multiple programs available in Hankin but uh, I believe Natalia we are talking about the rolling uh, application going on right now for only specifically one program which has different track which is business management if you are looking at if you look at the Hankin website you will see program in finance as well economics as well. Um, intellectual property as well, but those programs admission requirement is basically the admission application runs from November to January. So for 2022 September, the admission is closed because for those programs, but you can apply for different tracks in business management, which we're going to talk about now. So I'm putting the link in the description. You can see that link. Uh, we have made the video last year as well uh, about the admission requirement for the other programs. So Natalia, when it comes to the, bachelor, uh, the, the the business management, you have multiple tracks. Could you please explain what is the general admission requirement and what is the specific admission requirement of each track, if there's any? Uh, yes, sure. So as you have mentioned already, that uh, we do have two application rounds. 
and we only have one intake so uh, our main admission round ended in middle of january and then current rolling admission round has now started and it will run until uh, the beginning of uh, may this year and all the studies then will begin in um, august, late august 2022 uh, if uh, you are interested in other programs and other tracks than uh, business and management then feel free to come back to uh, to our application in the beginning of november this year that will be the for the intake 2023 though but uh now the role of admission is ongoing and it's open for the business and management that is taught both in health and care and in vasa and when you apply to role and admission you may apply to several you may apply apply to several tracks actually uh, and uh, the tracks that are taught there are humanitarian logistics, marketing, international strategy, sustainability, and marketing and management, and study location is in Vasa. Um, so let me go a bit further and introduce you to the eligibility criteria of that. And actually, it's um, you don't uh, it's the same admissions criteria for all the tr uh, all the tracks uh, that you study that you apply to. So what you need to do is to have a bachelor's degree from a recognized university or polytech outside of Finland. So this role and admission is actually only open for the international students or for the students who have a degree outside of Finland. So it's also open, for example, for Finnish students who have a degree from elsewhere. But for you, uh, if you have a bachelor's degree from a recognized university, then you are eligible to apply. But you need to look very carefully if you have enough uh, uh, subjects and credits uh, within study within the studies in business and management or economics. Uh, so you need to have at least a team. And uh, from uh, our experiences, experience there is that you have uh, business and administration or economics as your uh, major uh, in when you study on the bachelor's level. Uh, uh, but you can uh, you can also yourself maybe or you depend there as a, um, and your colleagues may help a student to evaluate his or her degree and see if the uh, amount of the credits is enough in the in the bachelor's degree. Uh, so this is the first requirement that the students should fulfill. The second one is of course the language requirement. Um, uh, student needs to take a language test. Uh, so it might be IELTS, it might be TOEFL, or PT, or C2 proficiency, or C1 advanced. Uh, students who have a degree uh, or secondary education conducted in English language in Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, or the United States are uh, ex uh, do fulfill already the language requirements, so they do not need to take a language test to fulfill their requirement, but uh, if you're a student who has a degree from any other country than those mentioned, then you need to take a language test. Yeah. And uh, as Hanken uh, accepts almost all of the language tests available, I think it's also uh, not such a harsh requirement to fulfill. Absolutely not. Uh, I think uh, yep. To make it very clear, the Hanken require for the master's program 6.5 ILTS and equivalent other examination, am I right? Uh, yes, it's a 6.5 in IELTS. And if you're, for example, to take a TOEFL test, then you need to have at least 92 internet based. Yeah. Um, yes. So basically, um, just for to understand for the students, uh, in Sweden, if you have a three years bachelor degree, you cannot do a master's, right? That's the, that's what they follow. Uh, so the, the if students have a three year bachelor degree in the field of business management, because a lot of students do come with other backgrounds, you know, and that's where they uh, don't understand that certain universities and business schools in the European Union are very specific on the relevance of the background. So if students coming with a three years bachelor degree in business and management uh, or economics, you know, only mm -hmm. then they're eligible for your uh, various tracks uh, available. Am I right? Yes, this is correct. And uh... Uh, if I remember correctly, that in India, this three years bachelor's gives you a right to continue in India for the Absolutely. master's degree. Absolutely. Yes. So uh, I know this rule in, from Sweden that they do not allow the three years bachelor's. Uh, but in Finland, uh, the uh, legislation is the following that if the student uh, has uh, a possibility to, to continue with uh, uh, to higher 
degree with the education that he has received in this country, then he is also allowed to enter the next level education also in Finland. So if the student has a bachelor's, a three years bachelor's in economics or business administration from Indian University, uh, then he or she may apply to master's program at Hanken in Finland. Great. So um, students who come, uh, I want, I'm specifically asking this question for those students who do not have a business background, you know, and they are very adamant that I wanted to study in a top institute, you know, I want to study, let's say, international um, strategy or marketing. I have a strong experience in marketing, but by qualification, I'm an engineer, but I have worked for five years in a marketing department and I am now a marketing guy, but my previous education is only engineering. Now, this kind of a student, you know, we'll get a lot of students with, you know, with, this, with these, these backgrounds. Should they apply for your programs or there is no chance at all? Uh, well, if the student has uh, no, no at all studies in business administration or economics or marketing, or and the degree that he or she has received from previous studies is completely in engineering, then he unfortunately uh, cannot apply to Hanken uh, because in the rolling admission round, uh, the minimum requirement of the subjects within the chosen area is at least 80 credits. And if the student applies from the, in the main admission, then it's 30. So if there are no studies in business administration before at all, so unfortunately there is no possibility to apply to Hanken. Great. So I think this is a very clear understanding now that if you don't come from the similar background, there is no chance. It doesn't matter what kind of experience you carry. Second question is going to be, I have got a business degree, uh, you know, and I have a three years bachelor degree. I qualify for your admission round. What is the minimum GPA? Do you have any, okay, as a student, I, I might get into admission into my own, in my own country, but uh, as does Hankin have some kind of a cutoff that uh, giving example out of 100 or out of 10, uh, if I say out of 10, any kind of a minimum CGPA I should have to apply for Hankin where I have realistic the chances of getting admission? Uh, yep, um, for the students who are coming outside of European Union, so for example, let's say you're a student with a three years bachelor's degree from India, uh, we do not calculate the GPA uh, for you and you don't need to calculate the GPA for you for your studies uh, neither. What you need to do is take a GMAT or GRE test and that will be a substitute for your GPA requirement. So once you take a GMAT, you need to have at least a score of 600 or equivalent in uh, GRE uh, to be eligible to apply. So of course, it's important that you have uh, good grades because you will be uh, required in, when you start to study at Hanken, you will also have peer mates from like peer students from all over the world who are previously were also successful in their previous studies. So you also need to be competitive, like uh, to be able to work with them. Uh, but you don't, uh, we don't, for the applicants outside of European Union, uh, we do not uh, calculate the GPA, but we look on the GMAT testing. Great. So uh, students, you have seen that uh, if you're coming from a non-relevant background, no need to apply. There's no, uh, there's no way to get into the programs. Number two, you've seen that uh, the IELTS requirement is very clear. Uh, it's 6.5 IELTS and others as well. Now, if you um, uh, if you have GPA less or more, that's a secondary part that will not affect your admission uh, you know, uh, criteria. But you need a, a the GMAT is mandatory or an equivalent in GRE. So if you if somebody uh, has good marks, I'm asking this question intentionally. But a lot of people come to me and say, I've got a good grade, you know, but I don't have a GMAT. So such students can they apply without GMAT or GRE? Is there any way out? No. Uh no, uh, if the student comes from the country outside of European Union, he needs to take a GMAT. Uh, the only exception is made for the students who are come who have a degree, a previous degree from the Hunkin Partner University, uh, okay. because uh, there we can compare somehow to Hunkin uh, grading and so. So in India, we do have actually one partner. Let me check the name now. IIFT. It's in the Institute of. Uh... It's in, in it's in Delhi, IIFT. Yeah, yeah, it's New Delhi. So that uh, so if they, there is a student out from this this particular university, uh, and there we if the GPA needs to be grade B in the US scaling, B plus in the US scaling, so quite high. 
Okay. Then he, so then that student... the, then the student can uh, be waived the GMAT or G, or, or GRE score. Okay. But students from other universities, if they do not have a GMAT, they need to take uh, that test be before applying. Great. So um, as students, as you can see, we are talking about a world rank, uh, 54 rank institution. GMAT is a very basic requirement. If you talk about IM as well, you know, we, you have to have an entrance examination. So here you don't have an entrance examination. Here your application will be validated on the basis of GMAT, which is how this is, which is what a lot of business schools across the world uh, uh, use it for their uh, admission criteria. So it's just a basic requirement. So if you're looking for a top rank school anywhere in the world, I think GMAT, I think GMAT is going to be the first thing which every top rank institute will ask, you know, and especially. Um, yeah, I think that many, you know, like many business schools and many, many business universities all over the world actually require GMAT or GRE. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I haven't seen any triple crown. Uh, I mean, as I said, if I am Calcutta, there's an entrance examination. So you have to crack the entrance and then you have an interview also. So, uh, you know, uh, if you want to get into the admission into the IMs, any, any one of the IMs in India, you just can't walk in with the grades. So it's here, it's still, you know, it's a, it's a better chance. So the admission is quite clear. Coming to the tuition fee for mm -hmm. the uh, programs, these different tracks, is it same and how much it is? Uh, yes, the um, tuition fee is the same for all the uh, uh, specialization and all the tracks. It's 12,500 per year, uh, euros. So it's 25,000 euros for the two years of studies. And I can, so as a, students, you understood that um, Dalia already informed you that you can pay for the first semester and then you can pay yes. every device as well. So you can pay this entire amount in four semester installments. And yes. That's yep. thing though. And I'm going to repeat, if you are paying per semester, at least for the first time when you're applying for resident permit, you have to show your living expenses Plus, you have to show your six months of pending tuition fee. Also, a lot of students have got the uh, the source of living expenses. They can justify it in case you're not able to collect the uh, other amount, the balance tuition fee in the legitimate source. Please pay full your tuition fee. This way, you do not have to show the more money. You know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, show money, your money is only living expenses. Uh, this is also a piece of advice for students who are applying for Finland. Uh, you apply for Hanka or any other institute as well. It's the same. When we talk about uh, job uh, job seeker visa or stay back option, it is one year. Uh, is one year enough to find job in Finland? A lot of people ask this question. Uh, yes, it's actually enough uh, because uh, Hanken uh, does a lot of like you can also have a career possibility through Hanken. As so we do have alumni events where you have a possibility, for example, to meet with uh, alumni who have already excelled in the career. They can give you advice and, you know, help you with networking. We also do have also matchmaking events, not only for the students, but also for our early alumni who are in the second phase of jobs. So uh, there are plenty of opportunities uh, that you, that Hanket also offers you as an alumni uh, to help you to help to find a job after the graduation. Okay. Usually, most of our students do have a job within six months after the graduation, so oh, this year is enough. Okay, and majority of the students get jobs in Finland or outside Finland? Um, most of them actually would like then after the studies to stay in Finland and they do get job also here in Finland as well. Okay, I got admission in Hankin, I got a great education, I've spent 20,000 euros, all super. Um, you know, next thing which any student will ask, you know, uh, normally in counseling is, okay, I, I got a job in Finland. How many years I have to work in Finland to get my permanent residency? That's the second thing people always ask. Um, is this going to be long or what, what years we have to spend? Uh, well, it's a very clear process and transparent process. It's all open on the MIGRI web pages. So usually uh, it takes up to four years to receive the residence, uh, the permanent residence permit. But it also, uh, it's also different from case by case. So I think it's for us, it's not very proper to give the migration advice as we are a university. Uh, but if you are interested about in the getting the residence permit, then there are uh, the, all the information is on the migration services. So I completely understand that. I think yeah. uh, 
the student as a university it's not the uh, a lot of students ask you know to universities and i'm i i really appreciate that you you moving them towards the immigration page but yes um, as a consultancy i can say that you know because as a university that is not in the capacity but uh, yes it takes four years to uh, apply for p you have to work for four years before you can apply for your permanent residency and more can be formed on the immigration pages and uh, when comes to the uh, student normally who are coming with the, for a masters degree uh, do they have to have experience is it mandatory uh no we do not require um, working experience uh because hankan is a research based university so what for us it matters is your uh previous degree and your previous academic success and your previous studies uh we do not require any kind of uh, work experience for for our applicants but i know that if you do have uh experience from the field that you for example would like to start to study it always beneficial for your motivational letter and also then for your further studies i know that we do have for example for the humanitarian logistics we have a lot of students who have studied international business as their first degree and they during that they have started to develop you know interest for example for the uh for how the supply chain work and so on so that's the way for them to sh to showcase that in the motivation letter but we do not require working experience so Okay, and none of the programs in business management, none of the track in the business management required. That's great. So, students, if you are finishing your education in India, you can definitely apply for Hankin and uh, without any experience because you only uh, you only heard that out. Uh, as students who are going to pass this year, uh, they will have their uh, the certificate diploma, provisional certificate diploma by June. Now, this is going to be too late you know, to apply for the resident permit uh, as it takes a few months. Now, those students who are passing this year, can they also apply? Will you be able to accept them conditionally? Can they apply for the uh, visa, or should they apply for the next year? Uh, well, if the student uh, uh, will graduate and, uh, before the thirty-first of July this year and will get the diploma before the thirty-first of July this year, we um, offer such so-called like. Uh, conditional admission and um, i would believe that with the uh with the conditional admission you may apply to the residence permit card so you may go to the embassy with that uh but what you as a student need to then uh, send us and to show us that you will need to show the diploma before the 31st of uh, july this year so for example if you apply today uh with the whole package of documents uh and you will fill, fulfill all the requirements. You will be offered admission within the coming two weeks. And that will mean for the student that this conditional admission will be off, issued also within this coming two weeks, that you can take it and go to the embassy and apply for the residence permit. Uh, and after that, uh, receive that residence permit card. But unfortunately, if you will not be able to graduate and you will not receive your diploma then in time before the 31st of July this year, uh, you will need to contact us so we will see how we will either cancel your admission or try to transfer it to next year Good. and you only have one intake which is september each. yes yes we only do have one intake uh, for autumn Great. so students uh, from india uh, have you seen students from india in the past you did your institute have some indian community uh, I don't say that we have an, like an Indian community at Hankin, but we do have students from India, maybe one, two, three in each year starting their studies. Some of them come uh, directly uh, from their bachelor's degree elsewhere, for example, in India or any other country. But some of them have, for example, studied uh, elsewhere in Finland for the bachelor's degree, and then they apply to the master's degree here in Finland as well. When we talk about the uh, you know master's degree, GMAT, the moment GMAT comes into the picture, of course, the top schools come up. Uh, we, are, we discuss top schools. You know? But at the same time, we also know that when students have GMAT and they were looking for top schools, a lot of students are looking at scholarships also. What is Hankin uh, is providing students? Does Hankin have some kind of scholarships for st international students? Uh, yes, of course, we do have, and we do have quite a wide scheme of uh, you know, uh, financial support for the international students. Uh, we offer from Hankin side. We do offer a tuition fee waiver for the full full two years for the full program 
for academically high performance students. So also we do have a second year scholarship for as a tuition fee waiver. That's for the students who, for example, did not get this tuition fee waiver for the first year, but they have shown their academic uh, success and excellence during their first study year at Hanken, then they will be uh, waived the tuition fee for the second year. Uh, and also Hanken is the part of the Global Business School Network. Uh, and uh, I know that some universities in uh, India uh, are also the part of that network as well. Uh, so for the students and for the alumni from these particular universities, Hanken offers the premium scholarship that would cover both the tuition fee and also the uh, living expenses for of, of 8,000 for the first year and for the second year as well. Um, if you want me, I can now check uh, what are you know, what are these universities in um, India, and uh, we can maybe put them into the description or something like that. Absolutely, um, you can send it to me on the chat window, and I'll definitely put this in the description. Uh, students, if you are coming from these schools in India and you qualify for Hankin with other admission requirements, um, uh, and this admission requirements. Uh, GMAT is mandatory also. It's only for the Hankin Partners uh, Institute in India, which is in Delhi, IFT, where the GMAT is waived off because they have a partnership. Otherwise, if you qualify all the admission requirements and you come from this particular schools, which uh, we're going to put the link here, um, then definitely, yes, you can apply for a full scholarship, which means tuition fee and living expenses both. Uh, yes, correct. I, will, I now found them and will put them into the chat. Uh, also, together with the, with the help of actually Ministry of Education and uh, Culture in Finland, we all offer a, a Finland scholarship for the students and that will cover the tuition fee for the first year and also it's, uh, this scholarship covers the relocation ground uh, uh, for, of 5,000 to the students. If I have to apply for this Finnish scholarship, um, I have to apply with Hankin or with the Finnish uh, study in Finland or FI? Or uh, you you don't like you don't need to fill any additional applications. Uh, it's all into it's all built in into the Hankin application. Uh, so uh, you you need to be a little bit careful then when you fill in the application. So you for example you need to choose which uh, school, scholarship you would like to apply for, but you don't need them to you know write several applications or to for example to contact the study in Finland organization and so on. It's all done uh, through the universities. In the in our case, it's done through Hanken. So basically, you're saying that when I'm filling the form of a Hanken application form, there will be multiple scholarship options I'll have, and I have to very carefully pick up the one which suits my portfolio. Exactly. Uh, so, but basically, uh, you may apply for all scholarships. Uh, for example, if you're a student not from from the any university any other university than the Global Business School Network universities, then you need me to apply to all Hanken uh, scholarships are part of the this Global Business School Premium Scholarship. Uh, but if you're a Global Business School um, Network student, you need to apply only for that one. And for the Finland scholarship, because it's open for everybody. Super. So um, I believe the admission criteria is quite clear now. and. Uh, mm -hmm the uh, if anybody any student will go through the entire video so if you want to understand the admission criteria for 2022 business management tracks please note that the other uh, the other programs mentioned on the hanken website are closed because they don't have a rolling uh, application procedure for september 2022 but if you uh, want to apply for a specific program that you you are very specific on the program then you can apply for the next year 2023 the, uh, the the application will open in november but for business track we are still open and accepting the application the students if you haven't booked your gmat or gre rush the uh, apply for the application as soon as possible because you have very short short time left uh, may is just coming around the corner but definitely yes um, uh, hankin has three uh, accreditations from the top prestigious uh, you know uh, institutes and i think this is one institute which i can strongly recommend you for your higher education in europe because the quality is not compromised when you have three count accreditations um Tale, you want to add something else for students any any tip they should have uh, for the application uh yes maybe just a few words also to say that hankin is a very small university and very welcoming small community so it's uh, 
uh, I know that this is something also our university, our students also coming from bigger university is something that they value very much because they you get to know and to learn everybody very, very quickly. And you also get a lot of support both from the university as like from the professors, from the administration and also from the student community. So I think it's very also very, very unique for Hanken as we are very respected and university all over the world, but also very small community. One last question um, about accommodation. Mm -hmm. Do you have your own accommodation or a student has to find themselves? Uh, no, we do have our own accommodation. Uh, Hanken in Helsinki has two own buildings. One, uh, our own, like that Hanken owns, and the second one we own together with the University of Applied Sciences, uh, also here in Helsinki region. So uh, you can apply for um, one of them, and we can also advise the student which one maybe suits better to the like uh, where the student wants to live and how money, how much money he or she wants to spend. Uh, and also all the students in, with international coming from outside of uh, Finland, they are set as priority for this housing queues. And also in our VASA unit, we do have, uh, we do not have our own housing, but we have a very good contract with the uh, organization that provides student housing in VASA. It's called BOAS. So we also do help the students to get accommodations. Uh, uh, you need to, the student needs to apply him or herself, but uh, they need, uh, we help with that as well. Right. And uh, any average uh, cost of the hostel or accommodation? Can you recommend something? Uh, yes, it's in the shared apartment. Uh, there are options of living either in the shared apartment or in the studio. So in the shared apartment, a room will cost uh, uh, around uh, 320, 350 uh, euros. And uh, for the own like studio apartment the cost is around uh, 600 700 dependent on the size right thank you so much Tanya. i think we have got a lot of information for 2022 september in tech and i'm sure this piece of information will be really helpful for students to prepare the application for the coming days and in case students if you have more questions please um, call me on the below mentioned numbers and we can have a personal session and you can ask me all other information which you have for Hanken or study in Finland. And definitely if Hanken is uh, looking at your application, then you should start as soon as possible. Thank you Natalia for the session. Thanks for your time. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Thanks. And good luck with the applications. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.